demonstration, you'll learn about working with material properties. I've selected a steady state thermoelectric conduction template flow and loaded the geometry for this thermoelectric cooler. When I begin with a template, AIM automatically assigns a material to my geometry. In this simulation, the default material assignment is structural steel. When I select this material dropdown, I can see the default favored materials listed in the internal materials library, annotated with a star. This symbol indicates a material already used in this study, in this case the structural steel assignment we're viewing. Because I'm defining materials for a cooler consisting of two copper plates, a semiconductor pellet, and two semiconductors, I want to change the material to copper for the copper plate and pellet. Using the body selection filter, I select the copper plates and semiconductor pellet and replace the default location. Copper, like structural steel, is one of the default materials listed in the materials library. The material assignment shows those properties which will be used for this analysis from the copper material definition. AIM provides a collection of material properties that can be used in your simulation. In this case, density, isotropic thermal conductivity, and resistivity are already defined for the copper material. If I click the copper link, I will have access to many more material properties in the copper panel and the ability to add more. I'm done with copper, but I still need to define the material for these two semiconductors. I'll select this n-type semiconductor in the geometry, then right-click to add a new material assignment. I want to use an n-type semiconductor material already defined in a library created in an earlier session. I select Add Library from the Material menu here and choose my library. I can now use the materials defined in this library. I want to use the n-type semiconductor material defined in this library. You can see that the material properties for this semiconductor material are already defined. I'm all finished defining a material for this n-type semiconductor, but I still have to define a material assignment for this p-type. I select the semiconductor in the geometry. I begin by entering the name p-type semiconductor. No material by this name is found, so I'll create a new material. I need to add my material properties. First, I'll set the default state of the material to solid. Then under solid properties, I'll add isotropic resistivity. Here it is. This symbol represents those properties recently added from our library. And I'll enter the value. Now, I need to add isotropic Seebeck coefficient. I don't see it in the default list of properties, so I'll start typing the property name in the search field. There. And I'll enter that value. And finally, I'll add the isotropic thermal conductivity. While in this case I've defined the thermal conductivity as a constant, you can also define material properties using a table. This is useful if you have material property data that is dependent on a field variable, such as temperature. Since I want to use constant data, I'll select temperature in the expression and change it to 22 degrees Celsius to enforce the constant value at room temperature. I want to save this material to my material library, so I select this library icon here. I'm going to choose the library where I had already saved my n-type semiconductor. This p-type semiconductor material is now saved to the selected library. So I have three material assignments defined. Copper, n-type semiconductor, and p-type semiconductor. This concludes this demonstration of material assignments in AIM.